what is it? Hashtag Facebook Live Tuesday. I, I don't know. I'm not a hashtagger. But anyway, thanks for joining us. We are um, what we're calling exsanguinating the limb. This, this is a gentleman who came from South America. Turn it up, please. He's actually had 12 years, right? 12 years of wrist pain. Obviously, he could live with it, but it was interfering with activities and sports. Um, and I'd seen many um, physicians in his home country had uh, PRP injected and all kinds of, and really never had a solution. It's because we've never, never had a clear diagnosis. So what we're gonna do today with wrist arthroscopy, we're gonna look, so we're gonna put some fluid in the wrist. Okay. And we just make a tiny little hole, okay? All right, and we're gonna go in with this troll car and use a camera. So if you look on the monitor, there's, there's, uh, there's my glove. I'm gonna fool Kate into thinking, look at that big tear, Kate. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. So we're inside the wrist joint now. And you're gonna see it momentarily. Lights off. Okay, you know, immediately I see a bubble and some blood, little blood vessels you can see there and that means it's inflamed, right? So obviously it's inflamed, he has pain. So there's no surprise there. All right, these are the normal, uh, what we call palmar or volar ligaments. This is the scaphoid bone. For those who um, understand a little bit about anatomy of the wrist, the scaphoid is the most fractured small bone in the wrist, very common complex problem. But what I'm suspecting in him is a cartilage tear. So the wrist is transilluminating because of the fiber optic. Kate, this is a cord that you like, right Kate? Yes. It's like the disco cord. She likes this one. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and so now you're gonna see that this needle is gonna go in there, there it is. Okay, so now it's shooting out. You can almost, almost hit the camera, so I'm gonna turn down the pressure. So we're in the diagnostic component right now, right? I mean, we're not fixing anything yet. We're figuring out what's causing this guy's wrist pain. Same as my colleagues, like I had done in my knee. And many of you are aware of my odyssey with that. It definitely was an odyssey, it's still not over. Okay, so now you're seeing the, the clamp inside. And I'm already seeing what I think is the problem, what I kind of suspected. Yeah, I want to go under that cartilage and that's what's happening because it's torn. Okay. So this is a little machine called a shaver, mechanical shaver. We're gonna put suction on it. Alright? So it's, I'll say the case gonna help me control the suction, then I have too much suction. And there's a lot of inflammatory tissue right there. So I will take a picture of that so I can show the patient and his uh, family member. So this is, this is called synovitis or inflammation in the joint lining. Okay. So yeah, uh, let me have the shrinkage, radio frequency shrinkage pro, please. What music are we listening to? If it's a shoulder, we listen to Julio Iglesias. And I don't mean this Willie Nelson stuff, I mean like the real Julio, right? Because he's superstitious. Well, you, know, this is, you, you have to wear those socks every time. You... All right, so I'm seeing it already, Kate, you know, this is TFCC's with the suction, it's lifting up. So um, actually I'm looking forward to it. Next week I'm in teaching a wrist uh, arthroscopy course in Barcelona. And I don't want to upset any of my colleagues. I think it might have been Andrea Atze from Verona, Italy, coined this term of the liftoff test. So I'm seeing this structure over here lifting off with the suction. But look how inflamed this is. I mean, granted, this is the advantage of having a procedure with somebody who's done, I don't know, a thousand of these. And so I'm used to seeing what's normal, what's abnormal. This is very abnormal. I mean, that's very inflamed. That, that red, so I'm recording a picture. So every time Kate allows some suction, that whole structure is lifting up. Yeah. Yeah. 
this is a peripheral, this is a, I'm pretty sure this is a peripheral tear. You want to talk to you? Yeah, I have a uh, you know. fast fix ready. What? Get the fast fix ready? And this would explain why it's that pain for so long because it's, it's like a meniscus tear of the knee. It never heals. Just like my knee. My knee was, uh, I, I went to, um, I was up at Ortho now a couple times. They, they gave me, um, they gave me an injection. I did a variety of different things and it never got better. And finally, when I had the, my knee arthroscopy done, the pain went away that night. Literally the same night of the surgery, the pain was gone. Now, unfortunately, I have another issue now with, with the cartilage loss, but his cartilage is perfect. You see it there? It's just white, pristine. If there was any defect here, we would call, we would call that arthritis, basically. And he does not have that. But what I'm worried about here is this seems to be detached. And it, it attaches on the capsule. Uh, like everything in medicine is a matter, there's some controversy, right? It's not like mathematics where two and two is four. Although there are crazy mathematicians at MIT who probably will say that two and two is not four and will come up with a crazy theorem. But, but in medicine, there's no question that two and two is not four. So some of my colleagues, I'll be within Europe, believe that you need to attach this down to the bone. Um, myself and others feel that a repair to the capsule will suffice. And, um, I make that decision clinically, meaning when I examined the patient yesterday, he flew in from, from uh, South America. Oh, uh, probe first, please. And I determined that he did not have a great an instability, meaning, meaning the, the bone, the ulnar bone relative to the radius bone was not, was not unstable. But this, there's no question, this is what we call a loss of trampoline effect. So this should be, this should be tight as a drum. And it's, see, I can lift it off there. So I am going to prepare to repair it to the capsule here to then restore the tension. Okay, I got a good picture to lift off or not? So let's open the, uh, the TFCC. Let's open the TFCC repair kit, please. So I'll tell you what, before we repair that, we're going to look in another part of the wrist, what we call the mid-carpal joint. So this is another, a lot of people may have heard of something. Now he's got a little bit of fraying here. This is called the scaphalunate ligament. So I'm going to have to definitely look at that. But I look at that from the mid-carpal joint. Okay, get a picture of that. Okay. So you can see this kind of surgery requires two people because I, I need my hands. So, so uh, Kate is it's vital, but listen, it has to be somebody with experience because she knows my next steps. So these ligaments are perfect, right? You don't have to be, you don't have to be a specialist to realize this looks pretty good. Nice, really a veil of, of tissue which is stabilizing this part of the wrist. All right, so now we're going to go, this is called the radial carpal joint. We're going to go now into the mid-carpal joint. And the good news is I'm pressing the fluid in. It's not coming out here. So that's, I just reviewed a paper for a journal, for a journal that was talking about the, the infusion of fluid. But what I know just from experience is that if I'm not able to push that fluid in, then that's a good sign. That means probably the ligaments are okay. But I never, I never thought that his ligaments were gonna be a problem. But we do get surprises. Okay, so this is very small spaces, so. Okay, but yeah, I'm, Definitely in a mid-carpal joint, okay? So this big bone is called the capitate. 
when I started lecturing in South America, I had to learn the anatomy, and they told me the capite is called hueso grande. <laughs> I said, okay, I can, I got that. So, but this looks really good. This looks really pristine. This is, uh, I mean, this is what, in his 20s, right? In his late 20s. Yeah, so this is what you would expect, okay? Now, this, this part of the wrist is inflamed as well. We'll see in a moment. Incisions. So these incisions are called portals. In fact, they're so small, we're not even going to put a stitch in them when we're done. No stitch, no scar. What doesn't look great is this. All that red stuff, that is not good. Can you get a picture? That's like, that, that, that means this guy's been dealing with like inflammation in the wrist for, for quite some time. So we're going to remove that. Now, the, the inflammation in the wrist would come back if I don't address the problem with the cartilage tear. So the cartilage tear causes a, a subtle. Uh, kind of instability of that area, and then, and then it, as he does something heavy, uh, some sports, this is very commonly seen in tennis players, taking care of a lot of uh, pros, semi, uh, collegiate tennis players, high school tennis players, who had this uh, cartilage tear. And they go back, they go back to playing, to the tour, but you know, it takes a little time. Let's get the RF, I'm gonna start using this mid carpet. I'm going to use the probe again. Before the uh, Yeah, just to make sure that LT is okay. You know, I, I do this a lot on uh, manual laborers who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and the wrist does not look this pretty, I've got to tell you. I'm sure mine doesn't look this pretty. <laughs> but this is just, you know, really a young person's wrist. It's, so like, look, I can't even put the probe in. So my, my friend Will Geisler would say this is a Geisler stage zero, and I can't even get it, I can't even get the tip in. So that's a great sign. Normally, there's some motion here, and so this is a he's got a very tight joint. So this is a lunate bone. Hold that key now. I'm a little concerned about the skin for lunate. Remember, I am a little bit worried about this. Okay, so, so this would be a grade two, because I can't rotate it, so take a picture of that. So this probe gives me an idea of what the status of the ligaments are. The most important part of the scapulonate ligaments up here, the dorsal part. Right? And then we, we follow the scaphoid bone. Now when I, when I see an acute fracture or a non-union, I mean a bone that didn't heal, that you can see the fracture across here. But this is just absolutely perfect, right? And then I can look up here and you know, we can have some fun with the anatomy, but let's get to the job at hand. Kate, thank you for doing that. Step ahead. Step ahead. Okay, so what, what this radio frequency does is this, this, this tightens up this tissue. You see, I touch it. And it eliminates a lot of this sort of frame and what I call redundancy. You gotta know how to use it though because it, it, you know, like anything it, it, it can have some ill effects, so you gotta be very careful. But you can see now all of a sudden the red is gone. So so the red that synovitis represents pain, essentially. So 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 this this is basically taking the pain away. That's good. I don't want to do too much. Uh, this is a bone called the hamate. Um, am I allowed to say this? Giancarlo Stanton. It was in the newspaper. Giancarlo Stanton, who, who left us for the Yankees, uh, no comment, uh, broke the, the hamate, but he had a different part. And that's a surgery that's done open. Uh, and then this, this is a great interval between the, the hamate and the capitate. Okay? Oops. Let's get it. Make sure that. 
Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go and finally do the repair. So we're going back into the radio carpal joint. So these portals have numbers or names based upon the relationship to the extensor tendons. So next week, don't be jealous, but I am in Barcelona. I will be working, but I will be eating as well. I will be eating. Yeah. And the following week, wow, look how red this is, guys. I mean, this, you know, let me, let me have the RF. Let's, yeah. So we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, helping, I'm on the faculty teaching uh, colleagues who um, have less experience in wrist arthroscopy because this is something you got to practice. You can't, you can't read about this in a book, right? Oh, it's my fault. I had open. I had open. Oh, turn it down a little bit. I don't want the wrist to blow up. Okay. Hold that there. Okay. So. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit here. That's the part we're going to repair, so I'm not going to do that. But over here, this is pretty, pretty angry here. part of the ligament that's so we would call this a grade one here it's a little bit of fraying but we already determined in the other part of the wrist that this is okay so this is just we're just going to tighten this up a little bit okay this part looks pristine you get over here a little more inflamed so this is the ulnar side or the pinky side of the wrist Okay, so now let's get to the, the job at hand. So now what I'm going to do is change the scope to look at this, and then we're, we're going to reattach this. Let me get a shaver. I'm going to get it. So if any of my colleagues were watching saying, oh my god, you should put an anchor into the phobia, my answer is I do, I do this. I will clean up and create scarring deep so that the deep part what Ricardo and Andrea, the deep fibers to the fovea of the ligamentum subcruentum. To me, that's enough. I do that, and that will, that's a very vascular part of the cartilage, so that will scar here. What I want to do now is I am going to reattach this here. Now we're going to change the camera. <coughs> we're trying to play. What, you, what is that? What, what, what do we, when you were kids, what do we play? Let's do it right now. What do we oh, we're do? We can. Um, you step in different places. And, uh, what? Yeah. What's it called? Twister. Oh, wait. Twister. Twister. Yeah. 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 Wait. We need the mat. See, people think they're operating with them so serious, but they don't realize. If the cameras weren't out, we'd play Twister right now. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is a different perspective of the wrist now. So now in another portal. It's called the 6R portal. So, so I need to look at the pro first. Yeah, there's a detachment right there. So I've got Okay, so here's a pro. Later on, I'll, I'll do a little shrinkage to this area. See, the capsule's a little redundant there. But, so there's the start of the TFCC. And it should be tighter, it should be like a drum. Make that little bigger case. 
Okay, see, see, this is really loosey goosey. So, Kate, we have to uh, let's supinate them a little bit. Now we're gonna we're gonna heal this. Okay, there we go. We're gonna do this with the wrist in a palm up position of supination. I will not bore you with the biomechanical reasons for that, but but here's a tear, see? This, my probe falls right in there. And we're gonna repair this to the capsule. I used to use a, years ago I published a technique where, where we used a suture that we weld. It's actually pretty cool, but I, I like this. This one means, this all inside technique, means I don't have to, okay. Yeah, a little bit bigger, okay, great. And then, um, I have a bigger clamp. Now we're gonna make the hole a little bit bigger because I gotta get this instrument in. So this is a device that is going to basically, it's very similar to the repair that my colleague, uh, for example, Dr. Herrera, our, our, our knee guy, who um, at the Ortho Now Center in Miami, we refer a lot of the knee problems to him. And he would use something similar to repair the meniscus in the knee. This is a, obviously a smaller one for the wrist, but the same principle. Okay, so I'm gonna go in. So now I'm in, so now I take the protective sleeve off, as you see, it's very sharp. Okay. We got pretty good visualization. We're going to take some pictures that, so that way we can document what we've done. Okay. What do you think right about there, right, Kate? Okay, so now I'm going to pierce that. There's a little structure that's going to go on the other side of the capsule and grab the capsule. Edge of the TSEC, so I okay. feel the needle there. Okay, good. Can you take a picture there, Kate? Okay, okay, beautiful. Okay, now we get that device. So now I start pulling on the suture, and you're gonna see this is gonna cinch it down. Beautiful. Okay, let's get a picture of that. Okay. Technology, huh? Thank goodness for the engineers working in all these companies that come up with these toys. I started a company to do that, and then I got so busy with work on now, I said, forget it. Leave it to the experts. Are you trying to give me a hard time, Kate? Yes. All right, the answer is yes. Go ahead. <laughs> This is the part that I say that when we need the grandma consult. Okay. 
Kate, you want to use a light? Nah. Nah. It's just a show off. It's just, just a show off. So what you're seeing here is that knot, this is a knot pusher I'm loading onto the suture and I'm going to, I'm going to push that down and I'm going to cinch it down and I'm going to basically restore the trampoline. And don't say the word trampoline around my kids or we're in trouble. Okay, okay, there it is already. So, okay, Kate. Uh, yeah, get a picture there. Now we don't have any outside sutures or additional holes to fix it. We did it all inside. So now the edge of this cartilage, which had detached, is going to repair to the capsule, and we're going to keep them in this position for about five weeks. So everyone thinks doctors put people in casts to torture them. There's actually a reason. If, if he was to rotate, yeah, he would, this, this would detach. So this is going to tighten up in the wrist. And then with a little bit of rehab, within three, four weeks of rehab, it'll be 90%. I got a good picture. Yeah. Okay. Kate wants me to get the hair. Well, we still got a lot of single bites. Let me have a shaver. Clean this up a little more first. Let's see, that's a lot of snow. Well, we haven't cleaned that up yet because we didn't have this perspective before. So before, our camera was where our shaver is. I just saw a woman who needs a shoulder. I got to do something with her shoulder. She's all nervous. And I said, look, it's just a couple little holes. You know, it's, it's a whole different world now. Okay, so there we go. TFCC again. Yeah, looks very nice. There you go. Tight as a drum. So we're going to keep them in this position. Kate's going to put them in this place, but she does a pretty good splinter, right? He said it, not me. And he said, I got to talk to them. So. <laughs> so, all right. So we are not even going to put stitches in this. We're going to use little steri strips, right? You got those, Denise? Yes. We're all set? Yes, okay. Right off, this is a little thing that makes it stick. Right. 
So we're gonna that one's a little bigger, but I think I think that'll be fine too. I think. So we'll keep them in supination. Um, Shukatan or uh, supination, and then and then in a couple days, uh, in 48 hours, I will see him in the office. Remove the, the splint, put him in a light fiberglass cast. It can be a waterproof cast because these aren't big wounds. So he'll be able to get this wet by the by the weekend. Get in the shower, beach. I didn't say that, but the beach. <laughs> no sand. And as long as he's kept in this supination, that cartilage will heal. So, did any questions come in? It's a middle, it's a work day. We're all working. So, so what you saw here was not only a way to diagnose what has been causing this young guy's wrist pain for over 10 years, but allowed us to make the diagnosis, in this case a TFCC or cartilage tear, peripheral, the edge, clean it up, and actually repair it all inside without having to make additional incisions with, with the, the technology. You see the, the TFCC repair? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this sharp device went in and I was able to deploy these little bioabsorbable little anchors almost. I deploy it, push it out, and then tie down the suture. And now we let Mother Nature take over, keeping them in the cast in supination for five weeks. So this guy will get back to sports and uh, I'll, we'll be flying back to his country this weekend and I'll see him probably by telemedicine because this is not complex enough that he needs. I have good therapists in his home country. So I will see him um, through a telemedicine consultation in about six to eight weeks. I mean, unless he wants to come back to Miami to shop or go to our beaches or hit our clubs or anything. All right? Hope you learned something. Thank you.